I truly wish I would have known. I truly wish I would have known. How many of us have had excuse me, muttered those same words? Being a minister, I've repeated those words over a million times. We we serve God by, by serving all God's children, but, but sometimes we, we trip over our own feet. Something that's healing and comforting to one person maybe, maybe brings pain and a crisis to others. Celebration of, of Mother's Day on Sunday had been a, a long, life, long tradition in the, in the Disciples of Christ Church and, and one that I had many fond memories of as a child. But uplifting that Mother's Day could be uplifting and, and joyful for mothers in attendance, but painful and confusing. It can be stressful for the, the teenage girl who just found out she was pregnant. The mother who just lost her son to suicide. The, the daughter whose mom just lost her battle with cancer. Or the young family who has been trying for years to conceive a child without success. You see, something celebratory in the church might hold a different feeling for someone else who's there to worship that day. I served a church that we canceled that rich tradition of passing out roses to the oldest and the youngest mothers in worship. We canceled it the Sunday after a 16-year-old youth proudly walked down the aisle and was presented a rose as the church gasped in shock. Yes, I truly wish I would have known before. Or, or maybe it's a co-worker. You know, someone that we just can't get along with. There's no real hatred or, or hard feelings, just a little bit of frustration. And we try everything, but just can't break through. We question their actions and, and their in intentions. Distrust begins to breed. And, and then, then in a, a weak, intimate moment, she shares something with you in strict confidence. Something horrifying that, that happened recently to her child. And in that exact moment, it's all crystal clear why her actions are the way they are. You begin to emphasize with her and, and feel her pain and, and the mistrust. And you understand what drives her and her urgency to get things done. The guilt comes over you, but you had no way of knowing. Nor can you share this information with anyone else. You just say to yourself as you walk away, I truly wish, I truly wish I would have done. But I understand that. To reveal who we are, I mean who we really are, to, to reveal our utmost self is hard and risky. It is easier to just navigate through life with, with our mouths closed and trading different masks in different situations we, that we go through. It's not healthy, but it's a, a way to navigate through life, and it is convenient. We never let anyone know truly who we are. We don't open ourselves up for gossip and judgment or criticism if we just suffer in silence and just keep to ourselves. It's easy to do. But in our, our scripture today, in this rich story that we have, in the second week of Lent, we hear the story of Jesus' transfiguration. It's vital to the season of Lent because it is here where Jesus reveals his true self, his true identity. The one thing to tell everyone you are the Messiah. It's one thing to tell everyone you are the Lord. It's one thing to stand up as he did as a child in the synagogue and say the scriptures are about me. 
but to prove that. So others will, will truly know. Yes, Jesus healed and did miracles, but so did others. Yes, Jesus spoke of the love and mercy of God, but so did others. Yes, Jesus would eventually give his life on a cross, a martyr's death for those he loved, but so did others. But the glorious light of God, illuminating his presence, surrounding him by one of God's greatest servants, the, the founder of the faith, the one God made a promise to centuries ago, Moses, right by his side. And the other, Elijah, unarguably the greatest prophet of all time, who spoke for God in times of crisis and in, in times of abundance, standing right beside him. God's light shining upon him. Moses on one side, Elijah on the, on the other. That pretty much validates that Jesus is who he says he is. And it's important. It's important to Jesus to reveal to his disciples his divine glory before they experience the humiliation upon the cross. Let me repeat that. It is important for Jesus to reveal his true identity to his disciples before they all face the humiliation of the cross that awaits him. It is vital that they witness and see Jesus and to see this to sustain their faith in their, in their time of trial after Jesus is gone. And we're, we're told here that the disciples were, were filled with awe, filled with fear and fear. Worship. I think we can all relate here. To some extent, we, we've all had a mountaintop experience. A place where, where we have felt God's presence. A place where God moves in a, some powerful way. And we too are filled with, with awe and fear and worship. And in the midst of the awe and the fear of worship, God says, this is my son. Now be still, be quiet. And listen. In the time of awe, in the time of fear, in the time of worship, we are to be still and be quiet. Now, I have heard my entire life growing up, both from my mother and now from my wife, sometimes when I sit in worship, I hear those same words be still, be quiet, and listen. But what about times of fear and awe? Times of fear and awe. Lent is a time to be still. It's a time to be quiet. It's a time to listen. When individuals encounter our life, when we open our life up and and we share something intimate with someone else. We are to be still and be quiet and listen. When we encounter such, such crises ourselves, we too are to be still, be quiet, and listen to Christ. That's something most pastors don't say enough. Don't say enough because, you see, we need doers in the church. We need people to go, go, go. We need to get things done. We need to motivate people to, to, to be productive around here, to live out the mission, to, to increase the financial stability and the attendance of this church. We need people to do, do, do. We are a faith community that's found their stride in doing God's work. And that's a wonderful and beautiful thing because that's our mission and that's who God calls us to be. However, any church... Any person's life that is purpose-driven at 110 miles an hour and has no idea where they're going and who they are will burn out quickly. To exhibit Christ's true passion for us, to reveal our innermost self to another, we must know the being before we get to the doing. We have to know who we are. Before we move forward with what we do. 
When we listen to, the, to God's words, when we listen to Jesus Christ, we find out that we are God's precious children. We are children that are forgiven, loved unconditionally, and truly gifted. We are called and, and sent out to do God's work in this world. If we do not get the being part right, the true identity of who we are, the identity that we are God's beloved, then the doing will only become chaotic. It will only become frustrating. It will only become feeble attempts at self-justification. Justification that is grounded in fear and, devo and voided of any joy or peace. If all our doing seems madness and pointless, may we learn again to behold the mystery of God. To enter a, a quiet place of awe. There will be more and ample opportunities and, and compulsions for living out our call and mission. But in order to do that, we must be still and quiet. And listen to the voice of God. And in doing so, we know we would truly can avoid saying, I wish I would have known. Amen.